In this video, we're going to install Tia Portal version 16 and PLC SIM onto a fresh install of a Windows 10 PC. Following that, we're going to create a basic PLC project and discover some of the blocks we're able to use in our program, such as function blocks and data blocks. Finally, we're going to discover how to take our project online using a simulated PLC and PLC SIM. To begin, we need to run the Tier Portal installer. Running the installer will initialize the installation program. Once initialized, we will be able to continue with our installation. We are prompted to select an installation language. Click next to continue. As you can see, the installation failed due to the prerequisites not being met. In order to proceed with the installation, we need to install a Windows feature. To do this, type features into the start menu and select turn Windows features on or off. Select Net Framework 3.5 and click OK to continue. This will search for the required files. We need to select let Windows Update download the files for you. This will download the required files, install them and allow us to proceed with our installation. Now that the changes have been applied, click close on the Windows Features box. In the Tier Portal Setup window, click back and then click Next. As you can see, it has now allowed us to proceed. Click Next once again. On this window, we are able to customise our installation. Generally speaking, a typical installation will give us everything that we need. So I'm not going to change any settings here. We must accept all of the license terms and security information checkboxes before being able to continue. Finally, we need to select the security and permissions to allow the, the settings to be changed on this computer. Click the install button. Finally, the installation is complete. Now we must restart our, our computer to proceed to the next step, which is installing PLC SIM. Run the installer. Once initialized, as with the previous installation of Tier Portal, we will be required to select an installation language. Click next to continue. Once again, a typical installation is, is satisfactory here. Tick the checkboxes and allow the system to be changed. Click the install button. Once again, this will take a short time, so sit tight. Once again, we need to restart our computer. After this, we'll be able to begin creating our PLC project. Now it's time to begin creating our project in Tier Portal version 16. On the desktop, select the Tier Portal version 16 shortcut and double click to open. Once opened, the existing project list will be shown. Because this is a fresh installation, there are currently none listed. What we need to do on the left hand side, click create new project. This will give us the create new project window. Let's go ahead and give our project a name. Test project. Click the create button to finish. When this window is shown, the project has completed its creation. In the bottom left hand corner, Click the project view. This will open up the project tree view of Tier Portal. On the left hand side in the project tree, we can see a list of devices and groups which are created, but because this is a new project, there, there are none added. To add a new device, double click Add New Device. Now we are able to select the type of controller or device we want to add. For our project, we are going to add a Simatic S7 1500 CPU. For simplicity, we are going to select the top CPU, the 1511-1PN. The 1PN means that there is one Profinet port or Ethernet port which can be used to connect with Profinet devices on your network and allow your PC to connect to it. Because there is no license installed here, we can select Step 7 Professional and activate the trial license. Please bear this in mind, you may need to purchase a license to run Tier Portal version 16. The different versions of this CPU give different options, usually surrounding the allowable work area or memory. We're going to select this version, version 2.8, and add it to our project. The device has successfully been added to our device view, 
And now on the left hand side in the project tree, you can see that the CPU is listed and we have some extra features that we can add such as program blocks and source files. We are now going to look at some of the different program block types we can use within Tia Portal. To do this, select the drop down menu for program blocks. We can see that there is a main organizational block there or LB1 and we can add new blocks by selecting this box here. When opened up, we can choose between organizational blocks, function blocks, function calls, or data blocks. Organizational blocks represent the interface between the operating system and the user program. They are called by the operating system to control cyclic and interrupt driven program execution, startup behavior of the PLC and error handling. Organizational blocks determine the sequence by which the individual program sections are executed. Depending on priority, an OB call can interrupt the execution of another OB. Basically, higher priority OBs interrupt lower priority OBs. In our program, we use OB1, the main organizational block, to call the functions of other function blocks. Speaking of function blocks, next up, we have function blocks and function calls. They are both very similar to each other in that you can create a custom program code inside of them. But the main difference is that a function block, or FB, is used for program routines that have an internal memory, whereas a function call, or FC, is used for program routines that have a temporary memory. Function blocks store their internal memory in an instance data block. This means that it can be accessed elsewhere in other routines in the PLC using its data block address and it won't lose its memory. A function call will lose its memory every cycle of the PLC. Finally, we have data blocks. As we've already seen, data blocks are an area where we can store data. We can use this stored data throughout our programs, but they are just essentially lists. We can define different data types or structures within data blocks and map data into them. The difference between instance data blocks and global data blocks are that global data blocks can read and write data contained in a data block, whereas an instance data block is assigned to a specific function. For this next step, we are going to create a new function block. Giving our, our function block a name, we can select what number we want it to be by selecting the manual checkbox. For this, we are going to call it number one, and we want to program it in ladder logic. Click OK. This will add the new function block one to our list and automatically open it. We can add tags to the function block declaration window at the top, such as inputs and outputs. This will allow us to read inputs in from outside the block, perform a function inside the block, and output data again outside of the block. To do this, Let's add two inputs, input one, and input two, and output, outputs one. In this example, we could say if input one and input two are both on, then turn on output. Let's save the block and call it within OB1. To do this, open OB1, highlight our FB1 and drag it onto network 1. This will give us call options to create an instance data block. Because we've assigned our function block FB1, let's do the same with our instance data block. Select to manual and call it test function block. DB. We could now tag this block with process image inputs or process image inputs mapped into a data block to further use the logic within our program. If we open our instance data block we created, we can see the tower inputs and output 
are stored in a data block form. Now it's time to take our PLC online using PLC SIM. First up, we need to assign our PLC an IP address. Do this by going into the device view, selecting properties, PropyNet interface, Ethernet addresses. We need to define a new subnet and set the IP address as we need it for our project here. Assigning our PLC an IP address means we are able to communicate with it directly using a unique address. In this case, our IP address 192.168.0.1 shall be the only device on the network with that number. If we select the Network View tab, we're able to see our whole station with the green line of the subnet we've just created. And the green line connecting our PLC to it means it's connected to that subnet. To go online to this PLC, select the PLC from the project tree. Go to the online menu, simulation and start. We need to select OK here to enable PLC SIM to support the block compilation. Starting a simulation will disable all other interfaces. PLC SIM opens and we get a download to device box come up with PLC SIM already pre-configured for us. From the drop down menu of the interface, select direct slot one X1 and then click start search. After a few seconds, you should see that it has found our CPU. You can tell it's our CPU by the address. Click load. This box will save our settings that we've just selected using PLC SIM and direct slot 1x1 as defaults. You can select either yes or no here. The project will now be compiled, checking for any inconsistencies, and then we're able to load the project to the CPU. Once the download is as complete, we are able to select an action to start the module or no action. In this case, we will start the module, which will put the, the simulated PLC into run mode and then click finish. As you can see, our simulated PLC has now gone into run mode. This means we can go online to our blocks. Let's pick our instance data block, select monitor, and we can see the monitor values come in here. They're all false because the logic will not do anything at this point. If we go into LB1 and go online, we're able to see the input states and the output state of this block with the green line signifying that it is online and in running. So what have we learned in this video? We've learned how to install Tier Portal version 16 and PLC SIM onto a Windows 10 PC. We've looked at some of the different types of blocks we can use within our program, such as function blocks and data blocks and their relationships with each other. We've put together a basic program to demonstrate some of the functions and we've taken the PLC online using PLC SIM. We've also gone online to the simulated PLC to monitor some of the blocks. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you.